Okay. Ooh, it's been a while. News, news, news. So much news to go through. Welcome back to the new show. It's been a two weeks. That feels like longer, feels like shorter. I don't know. How how time works, how it's strange and weird and lovely. We're going to start this week with the news that Microsoft has done a sensible thing. Wow, who'd have thought that? Microsoft have basically introduced a refund system for Xbox and PC Windows 10 games uh, and other bits of software. And this is always a positive thing to be honest to see. It works exactly the same as Steam's refund policy. You get either 14 days or two hours in the software, whichever comes first. And basically, yeah, it's exactly the same. It's an automated refund system. You just get the refund nice and simple within 14 days on your credit card or similar purchase method. And yeah, yeah, it's basically a positive thing because, you know, we all hate not being able to refund things, it's a little bit shit. And now we can. Um, in a statement, or a sort of statement thing, Microsoft say, in support of offering gamers the freedom of choice, we are making changes to the Microsoft Store purchase experience by offering customers a simple way to instantly refund digital products like games and apps through our account Microsoft.com. The refund policy applies to blanketly to software and games as standard but does not apply to DLC or season pass content. Not entirely, I suppose it's probably a bit more difficult to sort of gauge how um, like when it, when it comes to the playtime in the software uh, usage software it's very hard to tell how long you've been in specifically DLC, in fact probably impossible to tell how long you've been specifically in DLC things or bits of the ilk like that, so I can I can sort of understand that, but I think St I, Steam's refunds might work on DLC, I can't remember offhand. So, mm, good, the good and the bad, but yeah, this is generally a positive move. Refunds for software is always a positive thing because you can buy something and be unhappy with it and want to refund it, and Lord knows half of the games on my Steam account are results of that. Does anyone else remember Bayonetta? That game is pretty good actually, it's a pretty good little hack and slash game and it has now been released on PC a whole eight years after its launch. Wow, <laughs> that's, a, um, that's, that's a long time, that, that's a long time, but finally it's got a release on PC. I have it on Xbox 360 and I actually picked up the Wii U exclusive sequel a couple of days ago for a tenner in a local CEX near me, Sex CEX. I'm going to call it CEX because sex is stupid, don't care how you spell it. Yes, on April the 10th it was released onto Steam for the price of $14.99, which is fairly reasonable. I would have maybe put it out for a tenner personally, but that's just me. The sun's gone away and the light's gone all weird. Yeah, fuck's sake. So yeah, positive thing, it's a good game. Uh, if you've never had a chance to play it because you're exclusively a PC gamer or something similar, now is the perfect time to go and pick it up on PC because it's a good game and you should all go and play it. Elite Dangerous is in the news for a couple of reasons. Uh, they've had a massive patch launch this week which I'll get into in a second. However, in one of the patch notes there was a hair in my face. There was a very unfortunate patch note which um, drew parallels to the incident on a United Airlines flight this week that I'm sure most of you will know of. And the patch note was this. Fixed some instances of passengers refusing to leave their cabins. Ooh. Now, I'm sure this wasn't on purpose. It I guarantee it wasn't on purpose because that's stupid, but oh my lord. Oh, that's so unfortunate. That really is. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, silly, silly boys. So the other bit of Elite Dangerous news the, to do with the patch. The patch uh, is a 2.3? 2.3? Yes, 2.3 update. And 
Oh boy, it did not go very well at all. Basically the patch had some probably unintended consequences of changing a lot of the statistics on various outposts and whatever in the galaxy, meaning that uh, a lot of places, like a lot of, because of the online the way the game works and the online and blah 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 blah, a lot of players have ended up sort of had their, having their efforts wasted basically because it's all just been changed. They fought for an outpost to go, yes I've got this outpost and then fuck it. It's basically affected the influ influences how things work, how like the control of an area works, and that's being either accidentally or on purpose affected by these things. So yeah, it's all just sort of all over the place. <laughs> Not good. A player called Jack Spratt had this to say about the uh, effect of the influence swings. I am a member of the Sovereign Justice Community, and there are faction is currently engaged in civil war to win back control of these two outposts which I can't name. The war was at a stage where a change in asset would take place day after days t after today's tick and in case control of the system. What? Right, the war was at, let's read that again. The war was at a stage where a change of asset would take place to t after today's tick and in this case control of the system so they'd win the system, right. After yesterday's tick, I think that means the update, um, the SJC was at 59.7% and the opposition was at 21.5%. Fully expecting our takeover of the system the following day's tick, we were flabbergasted to see that according to the Gaul map, SJC had dropped to 1% and the UPI have risen to 66%. This means in a period where the server was down for 8 hours, the SJC have fallen by 58%, the UPI have risen by 45%, that's a swing of over 100% and it's utterly incomprehensible. We have had over 30 C, uh, CMDRs, I don't know what that is, working, up, working on this up to yesterday, and our own, our own belief is that a faction could move no more than 10 to 15% in a single tick period. These moves could not be supported by normal play, and must be as a result of the update being issued. In order to not alienate hundreds of players in our faction, we request the situation be corrected by rights as this as at, at this day, we should have taken Griboski's outpost and controlled the system. Instead, we have lost this place and now are down to 1%. How could this be possible? Uh, well, how could this possibly happen? Under normal BS, BGS circumstances, this is a travesty and needs to be corrected as soon as possible. Good lord, that was a long statement and very difficult for me to read. Frontier have responded saying that they are trying to fix it as soon as possible but of course you know it's sort of might happen might not happen you never know but uh, hopefully that's a good result because that sounds like a lot of hours have been wasted by a lot of players. Boo! Change your battery so I don't run out. <laughs> it was getting very low so I've just changed the battery so now not gonna be sort of rushing my speech maybe not messing up quite as much but probably will be so oh well. Continuing with Frontier Development, their other big game, Planet Coaster, it's amazing, go and buy it, has been given a spring update. We are now at 1.2, or 1.21 technically, because there's some little bug fixes. This update adds quite a lot of things, as you will see I will put on the screen, the rather extensive patch notes, which will take far too long for me to read, so I'll just uh, read out the extended highlights of what they have added, 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 added to the game. So, the main additions are crime and security management, which is, so basically they've added crime to the game so things can get vandalised and made to look a bit shit, so you have to manage that. Right, prestige. Um, basically you can, well, a ride becomes less popular over time as it ages. But eventually it sort of goes through a trough and becomes a, uh, a classic ride, basically. Um, now you can sort of rebrand them, but they will uh, it'll turn back its age to an established ride, but it will never become a classic ride. So basically, you can sacrifice the eventual, you can sacrifice the trough. You can see my hand doing the trough there. Oh, lovely. That's a, that's a trough. For getting a sort of short-term boost to the numbers, basically, that's how that's working. 
They've added go-karts to the uh, to the game, which is you know that's something everyone wants because we all know that a roller coaster game can never be fully complete without some go-karts in it. Uh, some extra blueprints, which is always useful. Some people uh, build a lot of things using blueprints. I know in my series I did quite a few. You can watch my series on Planet Coaster. I'm probably going to do another video on it soon as well. Another interesting thing is dueling coasters. Now, dueling coasters basically means you can synchronize the launch of these coasters and make them all go at the same time and do blah 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 blah. And I am planning to use this feature. I'm currently building something and I will hopefully be able to put that into a video in the future because, ooh, five, four, four new types of coaster, I think, no. Yes, four new types of coaster. No, three new types of coaster. There you go. <laughs> and then loads and loads of bug fixes, a music picker, three new scenarios, uh, new blueprints, new scenery, loads of UI tweaks, guest tweaks, park tweaks, scenery bugs, audio, and all that kind of stuff. Lovely jubbly. That's what I was using to scroll, by the way. It's a lovely little... Uh, little keyboard, tiny little keyboard, I love it, very nice. So yeah, they've added a shit ton of stuff. Um, yeah, I'm, ooh, oh, I love Planet Coaster and I love the way Frontier are developing and supporting it. Keep it up, keep it up, just keep adding more stuff like this because it's fantastic and I love what you're doing. Total Biscuit, you may have heard of him, he's a YouTuber, has, he basically, last week or the week before, had a long dialogue with Gearbox uh, explaining to them basically why they shouldn't be doing business with G2A, which is a pile of shit masquerading as a key selling company. That was an opinion! Yeah, basically um, G2A are a key reselling company who have shady business practices to say the least. And um, this is this is sort of well documented in uh, in the gaming circles, if you know roughly anything about the game, if you're vaguely into gaming news and all that kind of stuff, you know that G2A aren't the best company in the world, and uh, Total Biscuit sort of proved it to Gearbox and said that they were, well, basically written a new one, so, you know, <laughs> good, good. Gearbox responded to all this evidence by basically giving G2A an ultimatum, giving them a very strict list of protocols and setting it as an ultimatum. It's either implement these protocols that we have lined out for you, or we won't do any business with you. G2A have, have however, responded by saying that there's nothing wrong with their business practices. Their business practices where you pay for insurance on a game key to make sure that it's not going to not work, or if it does not work, you get a refund, or just the lack of culpability for them based on what their sellers are doing, or the lack of any sort of prosecution for the sellers if they sell it like that, or if they sell a key you, that was bought using a fraudulent card, because that happens, there's no prosecution involved there. This, this is apparently fine. Is it G2A? Is it really? I don't think so. Splatoon 2! We're basically finishing on Nintendo news again, because of course, <laughs> There's three bits of Nintendo related news, so we're going to do all of those. Splatoon 2 has a release date of July the 31st. 21st. 21st, yes, 10 days earlier than I thought it was. Yes, it will be released on July the 21st in basically everywhere, I think. And good, fair enough, I want to do that. They've not, they've not changed a lot from its predecessor by the scenes, but they have added one run called Salmon Run. Basically, this is a sort of get as many eggs into your team's basket as you can. However, the the salmon, because you're collecting salmon eggs, because of course you are, um, this is a co-op thing. So I don't think there's another team playing. I think it's just four of you against the salmon. So once you start stealing the salmon's eggs, they'll try and attack you, obviously, and be like, ah, no, don't steal my children, which I think is a fairly valid response. So that's a bit mean for us to be doing to the poor salmon. But oh well, you're a squid. You're a kid, you're a squid, you're a kid, you're a squid, you're a kid, you're a squid, you're a kid! The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus has a European release date on the Switch, and it's a lot later than I thought it was. Yeah, basically, there's not even a proper release date yet. They have a release date of quarter two, which can be anywhere from April to uh, 
April, May, June, half to June. So that's ages, which isn't great. It could be the end of June before it's released. And its price on the Switch is, oh boy, it's pretty, pretty, pretty shocking actually. It's $40, well oh no, 40 euros, sorry, which is about 35 pounds. Let's calculate how much um, I finding Isaac Rebirth plus the Afterbirth and Afterbirth plus DLCs cost on Steam and all the other platforms it's currently on, shall we? On Steam, you can buy an entire bundle with the base game and both the DLCs for £25, so that's already £10 cheaper. Afterbirth Plus is currently not yet available on PlayStation 4. However, the base game is available on Vita for eleven ninety nine, and the base game and Rebirth, no, Afterbirth, single, the first expansion is available for uh, £21 on PS4. So even if you have, that's still less than 30 quid if they release the other one because it was 8 99 for the DLC, so... Go Nintendo for your weird ass pricing. And the final bit of news this week, and it is a bad Nintendo bit of news again, because guess what? Remember the Mini NES? That little thing that they made that was kind of like, it was kind of cool and I kind of wanted one, and even though I then decided I didn't want one because the controller lead was only two foot long, which meant you couldn't sit on your sofa watching it without having to sort of dangle it in a very funny uh, photo by Jim Sterling which was yeah demonstrating the point very well um, and couldn't add on things even though you could if you hacked it so yeah it was sort of all over the place but basically a positive thing that has now been discontinued in America Nintendo have announced that they are releasing their last batch of these this year which presumably means they probably won't make any more for America um, They've announced that their last batch is going to be shipping soon, so get in contact with retailers if you want one, because they're not going to be around for very long, and when they go out, they'll be very expensive, because guess what? Once all these are gone, all that's left is what's there, and what's there is a minuscule amount, because Nintendo are fucking stupid with distribution and can't do it right, and they've launched, like, fair, barely any of these, and there's their excuses like, oh, this wasn't supposed to be a mass mass consumer thing. It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? Of course it was. Everyone, loads, almost everyone wanted this thing. And you've just gone, oh no, whatever. And they also said, oh well, we res responded to the unexpected amount, unexpected amount of bloody orders by making more. Really? You made more than you were going to because you made a fucking minuscule amount anyway. So how many were you going to make in the first place? What kind of, were you going to make five and sell them all at £2,000 a piece or something? Fuck off, Nintendo. Fuck off. So yeah, I'm not overly happy about that. Uh, no idea if they're discontinuing it in Europe or Australia or anywhere else, but yeah, in, in North America, Contact your retailer if you want a mini NES because their last batches in America are going out soon, very soon. So that mini rant over and the news is finished for this week. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you are interested in any gaming related videos, I have a series on The Sims 3 which has just finished and you can watch that here. And this Wednesday's video was a new type of video I'm hoping to continue, which was a Rocket League discussion, a talk show kind of thing, which you can watch there and you can subscribe to me here. And I hope to see you next week for some more news.